a whirl. Coming up in just a second, we are going to have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt under Henzo Gracie and recent Eddie Bravo Invitational 13 competitor, Mike Padilla. He's going to join me for an interview talking about his experience with EBI, obviously some of his uh, training routine, uh, you know how long he's been doing jiu-jitsu, some of the techniques, and of course uh, even take a couple questions uh, from everybody watching on the broadcast. So um, thanks for joining me here. Once again, my name is Jim Graham. If you're wondering what I'm up to, you can always follow me on Twitter at Jim Graham. That's J-I-M-G-R-A-M-M, -M, and that's me on Twitter. And um, I host a podcast right here on MMA World as well as MMA UK. So my face look may look familiar to some of you. So thanks for joining me here on this afternoon or evening, well, wherever you may be, or early morning if you're on the, the West Coast of the United States. So thanks to everybody joining me. Uh, once again, uh, I'm going live uh, this evening or, <laughs> or afternoon, wherever you may be, uh, with Mike Padilla. He's going to be uh, coming on here in just a second. So... I'm going to get him uh, all set up to go here, and let's see, alright, let's see, should be coming up here, alright, give me one second everybody, I'm trying to get Mike uh, on the line here. And uh, yeah, for those of you not uh, familiar with um, Brazilian, straight Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, competition, um, uh, at least with Eddie Bravo Invitational, um, it is a 16-man uh, tournament, and he competed uh, at 155 pounds, and it's a no-gi tournament, and it's submission only. So... Um, when you do that sort of thing, uh, so you're not wearing so you're not wearing the gi. Uh, there's a 10 minute uh, time limit, and then after that, um, it goes to an overtime. And there's three overtime periods, or potentially three overtime periods, and each competitor gets a position on offense, quote unquote. So one will start with either the back mount or in the spider web position, which is kind of like an arm bar. Uh, type position and so you kind of go back and forth till one either gets a submission or both competitors escape that position and Then they're able to go so all right, we're gonna bring uh, Mike on right here now Mike So just remember to turn your phone uh, sideways uh, When you accept the invitation All right, how's it going Mike? What's going on buddy? Nothing much. Uh, everybody, this is Mike Padilla. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Henzo Gracie and recent competitor in the Eddie Bravo Invitational Tournament, specifically EBI 13. And Mike, thanks for joining me here on MMA World. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm on my uh, daughter's cheerleading practice right now. Oh, okay. No, we can hear you. Um, so, again, I want to start first uh, with EBI because that was your most recent competition. That was last weekend over in Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Um, as a guy who comes from the Midwest, I know you're from uh, the East Coast. Had you been to Los Angeles before, and, and did that the, the time zone at all throw you off, or is that something that was easily to combat? Uh, I got out there. I got out there early enough to where you know I could adjust for a couple hours. It wasn't a bad. That was my uh, second showing at EBI, so I, I kind of knew what to expect. Now, uh, compared to your first time uh, at EBI, do you feel that you perform better? Do you feel you performed worse, or do you feel that you were right at right along the same path? Uh, no, I was pretty much night and day. My first run at it, I was kind of a little um, starstruck. Maybe my uh, confidence wasn't as high as uh, going to the second one, but I um, had better experiences at other organizations uh, to where, you know, I kind of got my, my feet wet a little bit. So I was ready, pretty much ready to go as soon as I got there. Now, which EBI did you first compete at? Was EBI, was it five? Uh, EBI right? three, actually. EBI three, okay. 170. All right. Okay. 
And so obviously competing at formerly at 170, now for this term at 155, that probably had to make a world of difference as well, right? Competing more at your natural weight class? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 170, um, I, I probably walk around in the uh, high 60s, um, low 70s, but um, I'm definitely not a, a, at that grappling weight. Definitely not. Now, would you ever compete at 145, or is 155 as low as you? Uh, like no, nah, 155 is pretty much. That's that's my limit. I feel nice and strong there, fast, smooth. I don't want to push it too much. For sure. And uh, in the first round of EBI 13, you took on Mikey Main. You were able to uh, get past him with that inside heel hook. Now, for those of you that watched uh, the tournament, you guys are kind of rolling uh, in that position. You kind of go off the mat. Did you think it was going to get restarted? Or uh, no, I, I, knew, I knew the whole time it wasn't going to get restarted. So I just continued, um, you know, attacking the way I had to. Um, he kind of, um, you know, kind of was, I think he was kind of hoping for a restart. And I kind of had Eddie in the corner of my eye the whole time. And he wasn't really making a flinch, so I was like, okay, I got to just keep this going until he stops, you know. Uh, coming from a wrestling background, we, you know, we wrestle from bell to bell. So I was pretty much, until he stops me, I'm going to keep going. Now, when you were going in that heel, obviously the heel hooks are kind of, I hate to say a, a cliche, but kind of like the in vogue submission with the yeah. eye. Um, yeah, yeah. So kind of knowing that coming in, is that something you have to train more than usual, knowing that that's what guys are going to be throwing and that's probably what I should be throwing as well? Uh, absolutely, or really get your defense up there to where you can <laughs> kind of get a good position afterwards. Um, but you, buy, you better know your leg locks when you're going into these competitions, especially sub only. Um, a lot of times at this level, the guard's so hard to pass, you know, that's why you see these guys kind of just dropping, dropping back for leg locks. But um, I like to pass the guard as well as do leg locks, so I try to mix it up. Now, of course, um, with EBI obviously being a submission-only tournament, do you like the submission-only tournaments, or do you prefer, like, more ports-based, you know, traditional jiu-jitsu tournaments? No, I, I'm definitely a sub-only guy. Um I, you know, every, I even teach my guys. We, we're not big point guys. You know, we, we're, uh, you know, we're definitely sub hunting all the time. Now, uh, obviously, you're a black belt under Henzo Gracie. Obviously, um, there's a connection with that with, like, the John Danaher, Tom DeBlast guys, you know, with your Gary Tonins and, and stuff. Uh, have you ever trained with those guys before, or did you kind of have to break that off when the, the tournament time hit? Uh, no, um, I, I, I had some cross-training with them in the uh, lower ranks. Um, but, you know, I, I work full-time still. Um so I don't have as much uh, the luxury of time as these guys, you know, are training, you know, multiple times a day, starting at five in the morning. You know? So, you know, but I have trained with those guys. They're freaking ridiculous. They're awesome. Um, but uh, no, I don't get too much training with those guys. Now, of course, in the second round, you took on the very tough uh, Nathan Orchard. During yes, the broadcast, they were – they were kind of saying that you were calling Nathan Orchard out. And now that I have a chance to actually talk to you, is that true? Or is that just something they were saying on the broadcast? I think uh, it was like kind of true, but not as like how they were portraying it. I, um, okay. I just asked for the match, you know, I'm always looking to test myself to get against the best guys, you know, and, um, and I think Nate, you know, he's one of the best guys out there. So, you know, I tried to, uh, uh, a while back, try to get a match set up with him through another organization. Um, you know, everybody's busy. He's he's out there doing his seminars and and uh, doing other super fights for other organizations. So that was my chance, and uh, I made one mistake. The guy capitalized. That's all. He, that's all it takes at this level, though. You know, but shake it off, get back out there, and try to do it again. Now that you got this experience at your natural weight, you're able to win a match get at least get to the next round obviously i know you wanted to win the whole thing but do you feel like that's somewhat of accomplishment itself just being able to, to win and, and take on like a guy you said like nate or nathan orchard yeah absolutely um i definitely feel a lot more comfortable down there so i'm definitely going to be back um eddie said you know that's the best i looked so you know he's definitely going to have me back out maybe you might even see me at the 170 again who knows 
Now, I know they're – I know you said what was on seventy. Their next tournament is the absolute tournament, which is just no. Nah, I'm all right with all that. Would you ever do something like that? No, no, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm I'm too old for that. <laughs> now, of course, uh, I just want to get your thought on that real quick. Obviously, Gordon Ryan is their defending absolute champion. He just recently won ADCC. Uh, he's probably coming in as the favorite. Um, what do you think about this kid? I mean, he's only 21 years old, already a black belt, winning these big time tournaments. I mean, he's, I would say probably next to maybe BJ Penn, he, he's a guy that's, I would say, really taken the jiu-jitsu world by storm. Hey, the sky's the limits for that kid, man. His his work ethic's ridiculous. Um, you can't take nothing away from him. Um, he's he's unbelievable. He's definitely going to win EBI again. It's, this is no doubt about it. It's whether he just submits all his guys or whatever. The kid's, he's on another level. And he can only get any better. He can only get better. <laughs> That's what's scary. For sure. 20, 20 years old, man. That's unheard of. Or 21, I think he is now. Yeah. Now, of course, obviously, his one of his instructors and obviously training partners, Gary Tonin, he won your tournament there at EBI 13. Uh, what did you think about his overall performance there uh, at EBI? Uh, he, he did ridiculous. He did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Um, the... Uh, uh, the brackets always uh, favor the champ a little bit. So, you know, his first round, maybe even the second round, you know, he, he kind of cruised through. Um, third and fourth round, yeah, he, he even made those matches look easy. So I can't even – I don't even know what to say. But um, uh, the guy, he's also – he's the best in the world, man. Those guys are ridiculous over there. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the final. Obviously, it was a rematch between Tonin and uh, Wagner Hosha. Uh, Wagner yeah. ended up winning on points when they uh, just fought a couple of months ago at ABCC. So going to the final, I think myself and a lot of people thought this is going to be a very close match, but Gary wins by heel hook in less than three minutes. Did that surprise you at all? No, not at all. Um, I was hoping... Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of knew that was going to happen. If you watch Wagner's matches, um, he I, I don't know if the guy don't like money or what, but um, he wasn't really trying to finish any matches in regulation, you know. He, he, the guy has phenomenal pressure or whatever, what have you, but um, he, the, he don't go for any submissions, you know. He'd rather just uh, hold a position in um, overtime. And some of those overtimes, he was going all three rounds. That, uh, I'm tired just watching the guy, so... <laughs> Gary Tonin don't get tired. Don't matter. If yeah. That guy will roll for three hours straight. Doesn't He don't get tired. Um, I would have liked to see Wagner try to open up a little bit, but he doesn't do that, you know, So which leaves Gary fresh in the hole, ready to go and rip legs off, make money. That's 20 grand for, sure. bank for the guy. And do you think Wagner, it seemed at least in that tournament, and I, I haven't seen as much of him uh, as maybe some other competitors, but it seems as though he was really complacent on trying to, like, bully people, kind of make yeah. them uncomfortable, you know, push them, you know, putting the forearm in the head and all that. Do you think he that's, was getting too style. much in that? That's his style. Yeah. That's just how he grapples, really. That's He's an aggressive, in-your-face grappler. You, you can't fault him for that, though. He, he bullied his way through the finals, you know? For sure. All right, uh, we got a couple of uh, questions in the comments, so... Uh, we'll start first with a question from Peter. He says, what are some of your long-term goals in uh, jiu-jitsu as a competitor? Um, looking to, looking to uh, do a couple more EBIs before I'm, you know, done competing. Um, I'd like to see if I can qualify that coveted uh, ADCC uh, spot, but uh, we'll see what happens. Regardless, I'm always out there just trying to, just trying to um, you know, uh, test myself against the best in the world. Um, and that's really, I just want to set an example for my students by doing that. So that's really what I'm all about. We also got a question from Frankie that says, what do you think of the combat jujitsu, uh, that was featured at EBI 13? Ah, oh, it was good, man. Um, my buddy, Boogeyman Martinez took, took it. Uh, that's a different, that's a different animal, man. I don't know if I'd be able to do any of that. Uh, I don't like getting smacked. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's definitely sure. interesting. It's definitely interesting. There's definitely a market for it, too. Now, obviously, um, the combat jiu-jitsu with the open hand strikes uh, and everything, is that something you think might kind of catch on as kind of a gap between jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts? Or do you think it might 
or it might kind of some people might not get it. <laughs> I mean, you might catch it. I think it might catch on just because of these guys maybe exiting MMA or maybe the, even the guys entering MMA, you know, gives them a nice little nice little wake up, you know, because um, it definitely changes when you're when you're uh, introducing striking and you're grappling. It definitely changes the whole game. Um, black belts will turn into a blue belt real quick. Some of them, if they get hit <laughs> too hard. Now, uh, looking over at the field, obviously, like I said, I know you wanted to face Nathan Orchard, but was there anyone that, regardless of when it would happen or what round, that you were like, man, if I could, if I could take on this guy, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, trying to think about the bracket there. I mean, really, Nate Wagner. I'll throw out, I'll to... throw out some of the names there. Yeah, Wagner. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to fight fought Wagner. I got Nate. Didn't do too good, but uh, you know, like I said, the mistakes. Um, even Gary, I would have liked to see Gary in the finals, but you know, we're you know distant teammates, so I'm not saying that I, I wanted to, but it would have been cool to face somebody like that. Because he kind of goes for broke like I do, you know. For sure. Now, I wanted to ask you about Keith Kerkorian, if I said his name correctly. This guy yeah. got the news on one day and is only a purple belt. I think the majority of you are black belts, and he made yeah. it to the quarterfinals. What did you think about that kid? He was a literal last-minute replacement. They were waiting for a phone call from Bill Cooper. That was another guy I would have liked to get a match with, but he didn't show up. Um, Keith, man, that kid's got heart. Uh, we're actually doing a uh, charity seminar, or not seminar, um, tournament in uh, November. He's a, He entered it, so um, you might see that. He, he, the kid's got heart, man. I, I, my arm would have been broken after that armbar escape he hit. Oh, my gosh. Uh, for sure. Um, we got another question coming in from Joe. He wants to know, who is the GOAT in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Who would you classify as the greatest of all time? Uh, that'd probably go with uh, either Marcelo Garcia or Hodger Gracie. Two different weight classes, but those guys are the best that ever did it. Now, of course, speaking of ADC, speaking of ADC obviously something you'd like to do. For those of you who don't know, it's not, it's not like traditional Jiu-Jitsu. It's more actually submission wrestling or catch wrestling, however you want to say that. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you looked at the field, uh, a couple months ago, what did you think about some of the performances there? That, uh, ADC was awesome. Awesome this year. Um, you actually saw the sub, the sub only guys taking over. Um, and it's only a matter of time. You can't out wrestle, you know, if these guys are getting better at wrestling, the sub only guys get better at wrestling. They can turn their transition into submissions. And, um, you're going to see that you're going to see that coming. Um, a lot of times in the, in the uh, past ADCCs, you just saw, like, better wrestlers win, you know. But this ADCC, you saw Cabrinha beat AJ Agazarm, who's one of the best wrestlers uh, in the game right now, jiu-jitsu-wise. Um, you, you saw Cabrinha out-wrestle him. So that's going to be, you know, that's going to be great for the, for the sport, ADCC as well. And do you think that's going to be, like you said, the, the kind of help? And this is not any offense to Mark Kerr, who obviously was an amazing competitor, but do you think that would phase out some of those guys that are just simply big, strong, you know, wrestlers and, and show them that, hey, there's a, there's another part that just simply, like, takedowns and points and whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, these guys are in for a rude awakening. I mean, look what Gordon did to his field this year. Um, he uh, he totally tore it up, too, and he had some really good wrestlers in his and his uh, Keenan Cornelius is usually a pretty good wrestler. ADCCC taking people down and stuff. Now we all got another question here from James. He says, "Any advice for young kids who want to kick some ass?" <laughs> <laughs> um, just keep training, man. Just keep training. Now, of course, uh, I know you do some seminars as well. Um, how often do you do those, and how would someone go about getting you uh, for a seminar? Uh, I do them as much as possible. Um, been trying to push them a lot more lately, you know, because I want to, you know, eventually exit exit my uh, working career and into just teaching bull, t uh, BJJ full time. But um, you can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, Padilla, G Padilla B B BJJ, Pennsylvania. Um, that's pretty much it. 
Now, of course, you do own your uh, own school, as you uh, mentioned right there, Padilla Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu over in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, how long have you actually uh, owned that school? Uh, I've been open about a year. And that's obviously being a guy who's been studying jujitsu for many years. Was that kind of like a long-term goal of yours to get, you know, get your own school and, and start, you know, teaching the sport? Uh, yeah, like I say, like about when I turned the purple belt, I kind of knew, you know, that it was uh, def- definitely in the cards for me. Now, obviously, you're going to be teaching some of the classes there, but um, who are some of the other instructors um, that teach there as well? I have uh, my good buddy that followed me when we left our academy. Um, well, not left our academy, but, you know, when I opened up. Uh, Chris Gonzalez is a brown belt under um, under our organization. And um, I have a newcomer, uh, Araldos, Araldo Rodos. Um, he's a purple belt. Uh, he's really good teaching some morning classes for me. And uh, we're looking at some more classes soon. So we'll see what happens. Now, of course, you just competed in EBI last week. Uh, what is your game plan for your next uh, tournament uh, like that or, or anything? Um, well, I got um, I got the charity tournament. for uh, It's a Toys for Todd event coming up in uh, late November. And then hopefully it sounds like I'm going to have a super fight with uh, Joe Bays. He's out of Kentucky. You guys are leg lock wizard um, for the Sapatero 155 belt. So uh, we'll see how that goes, see if that gets set in stone or what what have you. All right. Well, he is uh, Mike Padilla. As he mentioned, uh, you can uh, check out his websites, PadillaBJJ.com. Also on Instagram, PadillaBJJPA. And also that's the same handle uh, for the Facebook account as well. Um, Last question I did have for you, Mike, though, was um, the logo that you have. It's like a – is that like a monkey with the black belt? That's like your official Padilla BJJ. Um, Yeah. Who came up with that? And I'm kind of – is there any story behind uh, that logo? Uh, well, yeah, like, um, I have a graphic designer that, um, uh, that she trains with us. Uh, she's, she's ridiculous, but, um, they kind of said I roll like a monkey, a vicious monkey. So she, she kind of just put the, uh, put the character together and that's, that's actually my face on that monkey. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I wasn't sure, but yeah. Now that so I, if you're, in, if you guys are interested it. in any rash guard designs or logo designs, I got the person hit her up. Or hit me up. For sure. And how would someone get one of those rash guards if they wanted one? Because I, I will admit, it's a pretty awesome logo. Yeah, I mean, I have some mediums left. Um, uh, you just have to hit me up on private message or whatever. All right, awesome. Again, he is Mike Padilla, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and recent EBI competitor. Mike, thanks for joining me here in MMA World. I really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you compete here in the near future. Awesome. Thanks for having me, brother. Good meeting you. For sure. We'll see you, Mike. Bye-bye. Thanks again, everybody, for joining here on MA World. Once again, I am Jim Graham. You can follow me on Twitter at Jim Graham, just my name, J-I-M-G-R-A-M-M. And I'd like to thank everybody that tuned in, asked some questions. And again, thanks to Mike uh, for tuning in and taking some time uh, out there uh, <laughs> helping his daughter out uh, there in Pennsylvania. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Uh, for MMA World, I am Jim Graham. Goodbye, everybody.